The first step is to go to sentos.org and click on this Get Sent OS 7 Now button. Afterwards, you can click on Alternative Downloads, which will bring you to a page of different downloads for CentOS. You want to click on x86 underscore 64. After you click on that type, it will be brought to a list of download links, which you can choose whatever. Now on this page, you want to select the one that says LiveCD.ISO at the end. Basically, this is the ISO that we want, the different type of CentOS that we want. And if you click on it, it'll download immediately, but it'll take about however long your internet speed downloads 650 megabytes around. So in the meanwhile, we'll get our second program, which will be called US Universal USB Installer. At pendrivelinux.com, I'll leave all these links in the description, you can get Universal USB Installer, which creates a bootable USB flash drive or hard drive of an operating system so you can use that USB flash drive to basically boot up and set up. So after clicking that blue button for the download you can click on executable and open it up. I hit I agree and on this page you can select your Linux distribution and with your flash drive inside it'll set up a bootable flash drive of your CentOS. Now I sped the video up and the download is finished so now I'll select my Linux distribution by clicking on that down arrow. I'll find CentOS near the middle of these different Linux distributions and after finding CentOS I'll just click it. Now you want to click on that browse button, find your CentOS um, live CD ISO and open it and now at this point you want to push in or put in your USB flash drive and make sure that you back up anything important on that USB flash drive because what we're, we'll be doing is we'll be formatting that flash drive and we'll erase all the content on that flash drive so make sure you back up everything so copy things and paste them into your computer now you can select your USB flash drive and make sure you check on the format checkbox which erases all the content Afterwards, you can finish and press yes on here, and the program will start creating a bootable USB flash drive or hard drive of that Linux distribution. In, the, in our case, it's going to be CentOS. So this will take about 15 minutes or so, so you can alt-tab and do something in the meanwhile. I'm going to skip the video ahead and get back right to you. So after the program is finished doing its thing, you can hit finish. And at this point, you can uh, safely eject your USB flash drive. You click on File Explorer, and then you can right click eject your flash drive. Now the next step is to create a partition on our main hard drive for space for CentOS. So right click on this PC and click on Manage. It will bring you to, com to Computer Management where underneath storage you want to click on disk management so if you right click the space that has the most amount of space you'll shrink the volume and then you basically designate an amount of space for your new partition so I'm going to shrink the volume 150 gigabytes and give CentOS that 150 gigabytes so after you press shrink uh, shrinks the biggest most available space on the hard drive then right click on the unallocated space and click on new simple volume click on next a couple times before you're, you'll be brought to this menu where you can name your hard drive um, partition and I name it send OS I just like naming the hard drive partition a name and you click on next a couple times and it'll create a new partition space for that uh, partition I guess and afterwards you're done so what you want to do is reboot your computer when you reboot your computer make sure you use the flash drive is in and then press F12 immediately to enter boot options then select USB storage device and press enter on start CentOS Linux 7 live what we just did was we used F12 to enter the boot options now it's different on different computers it could be F2 
and sometimes even F10, but not likely. Uh, some computers, you don't even have the boot options, so you'll need to enter the BIOS setup with F2, where you can change the boot order to bring USB storage device to the top priority boot order. Now, what we are doing right now is we're booting CentOS 7 Live Linux, and CentOS 7 Live is a version of CentOS 7 that allows you to immediately use CentOS 7 but it lives on your bootable USB flash drive. What we're going to do next is take that CentOS 7 and actually install it to our partition that we just created a few moments ago. So in the meanwhile, you'll have to wait a couple minutes for CentOS 7 Live to boot up and get started. Once it gets started, you'll be brought to a desktop which will look exactly like what you'll see if you actually had CentOS 7 on your computer. Now it's going to boot up and you want to double click on install to hard drive. Once you double click that, you can go through the setup. Now the setup includes selecting your language, so we'll go right ahead and select English, then continue. After selecting a language, you'll be brought to four options where we want to click on installation destination. And then at the formatting options with that little circle, you want to I will configure manually because you want to configure the partition manually then make sure you have that hard drive disk space checked off with that black checkbox and then press done now we'll be brought to the manual partitioning where you want to basically minus this 150 gigabytes which is the size of the partition that I just created and after hitting the minus button you want to delete it all we're going to make it unallocated space. Now after you delete it all, you want to hit the plus button. And we're going to add a few partitions uh, for CentOS to work properly. The first uh, mount point that we're going to create is the home mount point. And I'm going to put 9,000 gigabytes on it. So 9,000 gigabytes seems enough for that uh, partition. And then you just hit enter. Now you're going to add the next one which is swap and for swap I normally like to add about 2 gigabytes so 2000 sounds about right. Then lastly we want to create another partition with the rest of the memory space left. So I have 40, 142 gigabytes left and you want to put it in root. Um, the mount point is just a slash. Now as for device type you want it to be standard partition all of these must be standard partition and then you want to select file system ext4 so make sure all the device types are standard uh, partition and file systems are ext4 I know it's really hard to read because my phone camera isn't very good but that's what you want so you have three of these created and then as for the root um, you can click on it and then basically I you you can add a larger amount to make sure that you use all the memory and then update those settings so I think it uses all the memory so you can just click on done and then accept these changes so after accept, accepting these changes you're all set so it's going to basically install CentOS right now and you can just confirm and continue on begin installation because you're all good you so let's go over um, after we create our root password so create a password you you must create a password so leave it anything as you like but what we just did a few moments ago was we created three partitions right we created a root well in the order that I showed you I created a home and I like a lot of space in my home directory. Um, I create a swap directory, which is basically um, using a boot menu so we can switch between Windows 8 and CentOS. Then I created, finally, the root directory, which is the main drive. So now, wait until the installation finishes. Once it finishes, you'll see the screen, and you're all good. Yes, now we can restart our computer. 
Now here's going to be the most toughest part. If you get through this, you'll get your dual boot. Now when you restart, you'll see you, you, you restart normally. But there's only Sen OS, so boot into Sen OS because we're gonna have to add a change. You basically have to add a menu en entry for Windows 8 because the boot menu by default can't find it. Sometimes it can, but for me, I had to add it manually and I think that you have to too. So we're gonna have to wait until you boot into Sen OS. One thing that I forgot to mention was I create a user if you're watching the video. I created myself a user, but click on this. Make sure you agree to the terms and then hit done. Then continue. And afterwards, it'll bring you to KDump, which I leave by default and continue. Now I create a user, Microwave Sam, and I'm going to sign him to my user. And then after I do that, I will Okay. So I sign him to my user. Now once you're in CentOS, you want to open up a terminal. And now you want to do um sudo vim slash boot slash grub2 slash grub.cfg. Vim is a text editor and sudo is a super user. So we want to be administrator and add several lines. Now if you go to applications and also look at your files you can find this large hard drive which is your main hard drive and for me it says SDA3 so keep in mind SDA3 for me. So go back to your terminal and then if you do sudo vim slash boot slash grub2 slash grub dot cfg this is basically the boot menu and you can see I added a menu entry I'll leave this in the description, the, the entry that you need to add. But if you look back on your files, and you look at your volume, it says dev slash sda3. Basically what you want to do is in your terminal on the CFG, you can see that I have this number 2 after hd0. So 2 is sda3, 1 is sda2, um, 0 is SDA 1 so basically I use 2 because my Windows hard drive my Windows partition is on SDA 3 so use 2 um, that's and that's the only number that can be different the rest is the same basically I just wrote some stuff using Vim I is to insert things in Vim if you're not familiar with Vim commands and colon X is to save in Vim and colon Q is to quit in Vim. So what I typed in is menu entry, added a Windows 8 menu entry, and put it on HD0, comma 2, because my Windows partition is on SDA3. I know it's confusing. Please look closely in the video to find out. Uh, and then you have your Windows 8 entry. So if you enter that, you will boot up to Windows 8. Thanks for watching. If you don't understand then please look at the video again and pause at places that you don't understand thanks for watching one please rate comment subscribe